recording this session for students who couldn't be here today for missing the cafe Rio. <coughs> Those of you who have had me for class before, what do we always start class with? Happy, happy. happy. We cannot really start this without a happy happy. And it is, of course, not only a bar related happy happy, but Monty Python. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hopefully this is going to be Okay, hang on. I got to get to the right thing here. Okay, get Cafe Rio while I'm trying to fix this. Okay, somebody knows what they're doing. After that introduction, Okay, Mitchell has helped me solve my technological problems. Are you ready? What do we do with this? Watch the video about it. Okay. One of the crossbeams has gone out of school on treadle. I don't understand what you're saying. One of the crossbeams has gone out of school on the treadle. What on earth does that mean? I don't know. Mr. Wentworth just told me to come in here and say that there was trouble at the mill, that's all. I didn't expect a kind of Spanish Inquisition. Our chief weapon is surprise. Surprise and we appear in front of two weapons. Our fear and surprise and Ruth disappeared. Our three weapons. Our fear and surprise and Ruth disappeared. And an almost fanatical devotion to the Pope. Our four <laughs> Amongst our weapons. Amongst our weaponry are such elements as fear. I'll come in again. <laughs> All right, why did I choose that for your happy happy today? Because we didn't expect it. <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. The bar is, you can think of it, as the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> and their main weapons are, in fact, fear and surprise. But you are not going to be afraid, and you are not going to be surprised. We already did our happy happy. All right, we are going to play true or false. And every one of these is something that I pulled off the internet that has been provided to bar takers as gospel truth. And if you give me the right answer, you get the thing that my kids think is hilarious, a Tootsie Roll Midgey. <laughs> they just like the name Midgey. All right, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Miller. I appreciate that. Ready? Yes. Go. True or false, you can pass the Utah bar exam on your multiple choice score alone. False. That is false. You need 270 points to pass the Utah bar exam. You can only get 200 from the multiple choice. True or false, if your multiple choice score is high enough, they're not even going to grade your essays. It's too much work. They'll just give you a score that's commensurate with your multiple choice score. Score. That's all. Awesome. Sounds reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Duncan, it's a great idea. It is, in fact, false. <laughs> True or false? The bar will regrade your essays if you are only a few points away from passing. Thank you for the guffaws in the program. <laughs> Mr. Duncan, you get two midges. <laughs> they will not. All of the essays are graded in one room at one time by a group of people. They are not regraded at any time. True or false? Five students in California failed because they helped 
assist a fellow test taker who was having a heart attack in the middle of the essay day of the exam. True. 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 False. Part true. False. Who said part true? It's kind of because I already know the answer to this. Mr. Miller, <laughs> say it loud. You're being recorded. No. Oh. It's a half truth. <laughs> <laughs> what's the What's the part that's right? Uh, I mean, the, the students failed but it was because they're idiots, right? And they didn't actually fail because they're being kind and magnanimous. You are correct that it is true-false. You are wrong on the reason. It was an epileptic episode rather than a heart attack. And two of the five passed. The bar did not give them additional time but did agree to throw out the essays they would have written during the 40 minutes that they were helping a fellow test taker. Did the All person right. who was having a heart attack pass? No. <laughs> I don't. It was epilepsy, so I think he survived, but I don't remember. Just <laughs> hundred multiple choice points. On the bar, there'll be one answer rather than a maybe. All right. It's not like evidence where the answer was it depends. All right. True or false? I hear this one a lot. Our law school last year had an 84% pass rate. Which means you personally have an 84% chance of passing the bar. <laughs> I realize you went to law school because you were promised there would be no math. That's why I went to law school as well. But this one is false. Okay. True or false? Now, I had a uh, practitioner give this advice to a group of students. If you study too much in June, you are going to peak too early and fail the bar, you should not buckle down until after, say, the 4th of July. <laughs> Mid-July. Mid -July. <laughs> that one would be false. We'll talk about the calendar in a few minutes. True or false? You can actually start studying for the bar now. And if you do, you have a higher chance of passing the bar. Also, true. At least according to Barbary's statistics. Barbary, Kaplan, and Themis all have early start programs. You can think of it like a bar vitamin. You can do 10 or 15 minutes a day. And our panelists will talk to you about whether that will make you happy or not come May. True or false? Even if you know you are not ready, you should take the bar anyway. You have paid for it, and it will be good practice for you. True. 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 You paid for it. Yeah. I, it I will let our panelists address that. <laughs> but if you are in this position, it's a good idea for you to come and talk to me or Professor Hill or Professor Richards about what your choices are. True or false? A February 2017, you grads stopped robbery in progress during his lunch lunch break on day two of the bar. Yes! We are very proud. Oh, no. I'm sorry, that's what I want to know. He was outside on his lunch break. He didn't bust out of the room. All right. True or false? True or false? This is advice that I have heard staff and faculty give, the bar is pass-fail. You should do the minimum work possible to pass. Yes, finding out the minimum is what the problem is. This is not a great plan. We had a couple of graduates a few years ago who had a bet to tell who could do the least amount of work and still pass the bars. <laughs> Here's what happens. We ran the statistics. About 10% of our students who failed failed by less than 1%. More than 50% of them failed by between 1% and 5% of the available points. You do not want to be in that position. It's always better to overshoot that goal. Okay. True or false? Smart people are going to pass. Doesn't matter how much they study or how they study. False. Oh, that's true. Oh. <laughs> Name one. Michelle. Michelle. Your real relative in the middle of the top. No. <laughs> Mr. Miller, you are taking my job. That is unfair. All right, we've got Michelle Obama. Failed the bar. On
on the first try. Hillary Clinton failed on the first try. Kathleen Sullivan is right down here. She's the dean of Stanford. She failed the bar when she tried to take the California bar. What we got over here? Oh, Cardozo? Yeah, Cardozo. Our good friend JFK Jr. failed the New York bar exam several times. Anybody know who this is? Which one? Anyone from California? Governor yeah, Wilson. <laughs> and Mr. Miller, don't steal my joke. I already did, though. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't hear you. No, I don't want to steal it. You tell it. You do want to steal it? No, I don't want to steal it. Oh, okay. Tell it. This is my husband's uncle, Lance. He just really wanted him to be on there. <laughs> Failed the California bar the first time he took it. Now retired from practice of law, living in a pet house in Puerto Vallarta. Okay. As well as about the approximately 75 students from Harvard, Stanford, and Yale who failed two years ago. Why do you fail the bar? Because you didn't study. That's the number one reason. You don't put in enough hours to study and you don't put in enough hours of practice. And we're gonna have our panelists talk about the importance of doing both. Why do people not study? Well, they think it's not gonna be that hard. They think they crammed in law school and so that they can cram on the bar. Or they think, well, I got away with not doing all that much in law school, so I could probably get away with it here. Another reason people fail is because they stick with things that aren't working in the middle of their study because Barbary told them to do things a certain way or their friends or the internet told them to do a certain thing in a certain way. Memorizing the black letter law, which of course you have to do, but not taking the opportunity to practice writing and answering questions. Financial pressures, borrowing old outlines, working too much. And the last big category is people who have something just blow up in their lives. They end up being hospitalized, they have a child who is ill, they have a car accident, they have trouble with daycare, <laughs> they don't have, <laughs> or they don't have a lot of support at home. If you're in that last category, come talk to me or Professor Hill or Professor Professor Richards or Dean Dickey. All right, you're not going to pass by accident. Students think, eh, it'll all work out. <laughs> You've heard me say this in class before. I might have swiped it. Preparation is destiny. So let's talk about how the exam works. You know that Utah is a UBE state, a uniform bar exam state. There's a two-day examination, which you also know. The first day is the written portion. You're going to take six essays in the morning. Those are called the MEEs, or the multi-state essay exam. Like all areas of law, we love ourselves a good acronym for the bar. So the MEEs are the essays. Then in the afternoon, Oh, sorry, let me talk about the subject areas. These are the subject areas that they take from for the essays. They say on the website there are 12. That's because they put CRIM and CRIM Pro together. So I think of it as 13 because some of you have not taken CRIM Pro. So the classes that are in red are the classes that everyone has taken. Then in the afternoon, you have three hours to answer two what we call MPT questions. MPT questions are closed uni universe essays. So you have an hour and a half for each. They give you a fact pattern with that's supposed to look like real life. So a memo from a partner. They might include discovery or transcripts of interviews. Then they give you a library of materials, usually, usually some kind of statute or rule or ethics rule and cases and then they give you a task so the task might be to write a judicial opinion it might be to write findings of fact findings of fact and conclusions of law or a persuasive memo um, to your partner crystal did you have a question yes yeah, so do they just say hey there's this statute and we have to know what the statute is same thing with the cases or do they actually they give you the statute and they give you the cases the MPT is an area that a lot of students blow off when they're studying because they think, oh, it's closed universe. I can do that. You can do it. The problem is you have to do it in an extremely short period of time. So it's an area where you really do need to practice, particularly practice doing it under time. The bar examiners do not tell you 
stop after the first MPT, now start the second. And so students will take big chunks of that three hours, spend it on that first essay, and then get shortchanged when it comes to the grade on the second MPT. We have seen students who have not passed who've gotten zero points or one or two points on the MPT, and those are points that you're leaving on the table. Okay. All of, okay, so the MBE is the third part, that's day two, that's the multiple choice portion. All of these, the essays are graded locally and then sent to the bar examiners for scaling. The multiple choice is graded by the bar examiners. All right, the MPTs get the same weight as two graded essays. Those essays and the MPT together are worth 200 points. <coughs> the multiple choice that you take on the second day, you have three hours in the morning to answer 100 questions, three hours in the afternoon to answer 100 questions. Anybody do the math? 100. How long do you have to answer each question? One minute and 48 seconds. They only test six subjects on the multiple choice, and you have had all of them, except some of you have not taken evidence. Okay, those <coughs> scores are also scaled nationally. Day two is also worth 200 points. You need 270 in Utah to pass the exam. You can take your score to other UBE states. Each one has its own score. If you want something less than 270, you've got to go way north or way south. If you want information on each state and what they require, if you're thinking about transferring your score, there's a really helpful website at ncbex.org where you can look state by state. So conceivably, you could fail Utah by getting less than 270, but we could help you wave into another state. You still on the statistics look like a failing applicant, but you could end up getting barred in another state. Be warned, it takes a while to do. How long is a while? Um, <laughs> Colorado so, is six to eight months. Crystal Lee says Colorado is six to eight months. I have a student who failed the July exam in Utah. He just got barred in another state, I think about a month ago. They make you go through their application process, their character and fitness process, and then transfer the exam for the exam score. So it's not a quick process. So if you know that you're going to be going to another state, yeah. is it better to take the bar in that state? What I would do is I would sit down um, and are you thinking about getting barred in two different states? I just know I'm going to live in Idaho Falls. So then take it in Idaho. Take it in Idaho. Can you start the process of waiving in before you take in the bar exam? Call each state. Um, I have a student who tried that and they were real snitty about it. So it really it's, obnoxious if you're going to Colorado. So yeah. you can't find it either. Okay, so they were. I, I would call each state or whatever state you're thinking about, but the states are difficult. Most of these states are difficult. Okay, so here's where we have been in terms of our bar passage rate. Of course, we've got the 100-100 initiative, so we want all of you to pass the bar. I would particularly really love to see us leap over Yale on that list. Okay, so we're going to talk about what you can do to plan to pass. We have a number of people here to talk to you today. We have a number of panelists who are all U grads who have taken the bar at different points in time, and Professor Bernstein, who is not a U grad, but she is going to talk to you. Our first guest today is Tanya Peters. She is an attorney at Snell and Wilmer, and she's the co-chair of the Bar Examiner Committee. She has graded for the bar, and so she's going to give you some fabulous information on how they grade, how to pass. She's also taken three bars. Three bars. I'm passing around Tootsie Roll midges because you all did such an excellent job. It's actually Lewis now. I just oh, changed I my name. That's okay. So if you look for me, you have to I'll change for Lewis. Thank you. Okay. Um, good morning, everybody, or I suppose I should say good afternoon. Um, thank you so much for inviting me back, Professor Honey. This is my second year presenting at this um, little seminar. Um, my name is Tanya Lewis. I am a 1996 graduate of the University of Washington. I have a bachelor's degree in communications and political science, and a 1999 graduate of the Seattle University School of Law. And I've been living here in Utah since 2009. 
Um, I took a year off after law school and I worked in, um, in high tech. Um, I failed to make a zillion dollars in the dot-com boom, and so I took the Washington State Bar in 2001. Um, I moved to Nevada in 2003 and took the February 2004 Nevada Bar Exam. And then upon relocating here to Utah in 2009, I took the bar exam here. And so, if anything, I am proof positive that really just your average law school graduate can, um, can pass a bar exam, or three bar exams for that matter. Um, I'm currently an attorney with the Salt Lake Office of the firm of Snell and Wilmer. I handle primarily financial services cases, um, consumer lending litigation on the lender side. Prior to joining Snell and Wilmer, I've been there about two years, I was a partner with the Salt Lake City firm of Richard Sprat Miller and Elsa. Um, so one of my unpaid positions is I'm the co-chair of the uh, Bar Examination Committee um, for the Utah State Bar. I've been a bar exam grader um, for about six years since 2011, and I've served as the co-chair of the uh, Bar Examiner's Committee since about 2014, I think. So. Um, every six months, I go in with my peeps and we spend a few hours grading the bar exam. I primarily grade the MPT, and I think that's what I'm here to, to talk about. Um, so, um, the how, how we grade, I think, is what you guys really want to know. And when we are grading essays, we grade um, on a scale of zero to five. Um, five is the score you want, zero is the score that you don't want. Um, you have to average a th about a three, three points per question to in order to add up enough points uh, by the time that, that you finish your essay, you wanna be averaging about three points per essay. And one of the things that is important is that the MPTs are double weighted. So if you bomb an MPT and only pick up one or two points on your MPT, you're going to have a very hard time making that up with your other questions. So conversely, if you can do well on your MPT, MPT is plural, and get a four or you know even a five, cross your fingers, um, that is going to put you ahead of the curve. Um, so if you don't do so well in one of your multi-state essays, it's not going to ding you for that. So um, the best way, I think, to study for the MPT is you can go to the NCBE website, which Professor Heine had for you. It's ncbes.org. Um, we'll see if you can order, you know, and they change what's available and what's not available, and I have not looked this year. But in prior years, um, you guys have been able to order actual past exams. And sometimes they'll provide you a stand next to you, and I'll pull it up. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and sometimes I think they've actually included model answers. And by model answer, that's not necessarily a, a, a perfect answer. It's just an example of an answer that passed. And so um, my recommendation is that you guys get a few of those, and by a few, as, as many as you can get. But I would not waste a lot of time with materials past uh, examination questions that are more than about five years old. Um, and if you can get them in the past you know, two to three years, that's even better because things don't change too much from year to year, but they do over the course of five to seven years. And let me just give you an example. I took the uh, Nevada bar in 2004 and then the Utah bar in 2009. And when I took the MBE, the multi-state bar again, the multiple choice, the way the questions were drafted was completely different. The, 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 multi, the multiple choice questions were much shorter, the fact patterns were shorter, and if I had been studying off of really old questions, it would not really have adequately prepared me for the materials that showed up you know, in a subsequent bar exam. So really, I would just try to focus on getting what you can get that's between two and three years old. Go to four or five if you have to, but I would not waste time with materials that are older in about, in about five years. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to you know, read through as many MPTs as you can. And by that, I mean, I, I'm going to say like 10. And I know that sounds like a lot. You don't actually have to sit down and write 10, but I would read through 10 because you're going to want to get a sense of what materials are, con are, are contained in the universe. And there's going to be you know, a short instruction memo that comes from the partner um, that's telling you what you're going to do, um, as well as the statute, some case law, um, some of the transcript of an interview with a client or a witness. 
Um, and so you're going to want to get a sense of what these things contain. And you also want to get a sense of how fast you are as a reader. Um, one, I'm a pretty fast reader, but I have a tendency to sometimes skip over things and not like read the information correctly the first time. And, and if that's a weakness that you have, you want to understand that that's your weakness and be able to prepare for it going into the bar exam. If you're a slower reader, then you're going to want to be able to <coughs> select out the parts of the file on the MPT that are the most important and focus in on those. And as Professor Heine stated, You've got 90 minutes per MPT. They give you the two questions or the two problems and then three hours to figure it out. But it's going to be up to you guys to manage yourselves. I was going to say, it's up to you to manage your time, but time cannot be managed. We can only manage ourselves relative to time, so you'll have to manage yourself relative to the time. And so um, this is my advice to all of you guys is... You know, do them one at a time. Don't skip back and forth between the problems. You'll cross pollinate between the files. You'll be thinking, oh, you know, Billy said this, but really it's like the other question. So just do them one at a time. And then um, you'll want to time yourself 90 minutes. You've got 45 minutes to read the file. And then you've got 45 minutes to write your answer. And that you, so, Time yourself when you're reading. This goes for, you know, when you're studying. You want to probably do three or four of these things under examination conditions. Because it's important because you want to be able to pick up enough points to pass. So when you're studying and in the exam, 45 minutes to read the file, 45 minutes to write the response. And after 40, the first 45 minutes, if you're not done reading the file, you're done for now because it's time to start writing. Because the number one thing that we see, and I've graded the MPT now for six years, is people who don't score enough points on the MPT to pass, the people who are getting their ones and twos, it's not that they don't know the material, right? Because the material is all in the file. You know, it, it, it's not going to be anything you haven't seen before, most likely. People who don't pass the MPT don't pass because they fail to manage their time. They spend too much time reading the file and you know they've got 90 minutes and they've spent you know an hour reading it and then they say, oh crap, you know, now I've only got 30 minutes to type out this response. And so, and who's like typing? Is everybody typing here? We've got no no handwriters anymore, right? A, a few handwriters, not too many? Okay, good. Because most, most people these days, including myself, can type a lot faster than I write. And it's easier for, for, for graders when we're not having to you know, go through people's bad handwriting and try to figure out what they meant. It, just, it comes across a lot cleaner, and you can work a lot more quickly. And then obviously, if you make a mistake or make a typo, you can go back and fix that. Whereas when you're handwriting, um, you can't do that as well. So, um, so that's the MPT. I would suggest that you guys take as many as you can, and certainly a minimum of three or four, and try under under exam conditions, and try to do at least one that's a criminal law problem, because we see criminal law problems a lot on um, that they get tested, and those are the ones that tend to take a long time to write the answers to. So, if you can do three or four under exam conditions when you're studying, make sure one's a criminal law criminal procedure question, and I think you'll be in a much better position going in fully prepared to pick up those extra points. Don't leave points on the table with the MPT. Um, the multi-state bar exam, um, you know, obviously we don't grade that here in Utah. It goes back to uh, Wisconsin, I believe, to be graded. Um, but the key is, you know, so I took Nevada and then I took Utah, and both of those are MBE states. Washington is not an MBE state. But um, if you can do a lot of practice questions of the MBE, you will be in a better position to score really well on your exam. The first um, time I took the MBE, I was really overwhelmed by multiple choice and kind of freaked out about it, for lack of a better term. And really the only way to not be freaked out is just to sit down and do a lot of practice questions. And so when I came here in 2009 and took the bar exam, I think I did, I think I did about 1,800 practice questions. And that was on top of what I had done the first time. But my score went up 20 points when I took... When I, when I did more practice questions. And, you know, obviously you want to get as high a score on the MBE as you can. Um, and so that's really important. So if you can do extra practice questions with the MBE, um, that will only help you. It will not hurt you. Um, 
tips for bar exam preparation. I always um, give a few of these just because um, after uh, three bar exams myself, um, I want to help you guys so maybe you're not freaking out so much. Um, when it comes to studying, early studying, I never early studied for any of my bar exams. And, you know, I was, you know, really, as far as law school goes, I was really only average smart. I got decent grades. I graduated in the top half of my class, barely. And so um, I felt like I always had to do whatever, I mean, whatever the bar degree program was, was exactly what I did, because I figured I'm not smart enough to come up with a bar exam program of my own. Um, so I'm just going to do what, you know, is professed to be tried and true. So um, what I would do, so when are your guys' finals and when do y'all graduate? May 12th. May 12th. Okay, so that's coming up. So what I would do if I were you guys is just focus on school right now and just, you know, get through your last exams, especially, you know, if you're in a situation where, you know, maybe you're... If you're really high up in the class and you need to stay high up in the class for whatever reason and get good grades, focus on school. And if you're not doing so well in school and you're worried if you're actually going to graduate, definitely focus on school. Um, and if you're in that middle area, kind of like I was, well, you know, my grades are pretty good but not super and I'm really not in any danger of flunking out at this point. You know, do whatever you want, I guess. Um, but what I would do, what I did for, my, for all of my bar exams, is whenever the Barbary program started was when I started studying. Use the time between graduation and the start of Barbary or whatever bar prep class you're taking to just get things out of the way that you don't want to have to deal with between starting your studying and the bar exam. To include, you know, schedule your doctor's appointments, catch up on your errands and things you can do. I remember one time I was studying for the bar exam and it was the Washington exam, it was my first bar exam. And I was, I had like a wedding to go to and I had to shop for like somebody's present, a wedding present. And this was before you could do a lot of, you know, things online. So I actually had to go to the store, print out their registry and, and, and all the stuff had been purchased off the registry. So then I had to go to the other store. I mean, it, it, this was like a three hour project and I was so mad at myself thinking, I've known about this for months. Why did I not take care of this months ago? So don't be like me. Um, take care of yourself ahead of time. So like schedule your doctor's appointments, buy wedding gifts, um, do things with your family. It cook and freeze meals. I did that when I took Utah, and that was really good because I didn't have to worry about cooking for myself or my son. Um, I just was able to just grab something out of the freezer and throw it in, and that saved a lot of time. So um, just enjoy your time off. Start studying for your Barbary or whatever when the class starts. Um, and then... Um, and then I, I, I can't tell y'all what to do because everyone has to kind of decide what's going to work best for them. But I always just follow the program like exactly as it was set out. And there might be some times where you can't do that specific thing that day because you've got something going on. So then I might be like a day behind or a day ahead, ahead or, oh, you know, I've got family coming into town, so I've got to take this day off to spend with them, but then I'm going to have to make it up on Sunday or I'm going to make it up on that Saturday. Or I'm going to have to do two units on this day to make up for that and, and try not to do that. I mean, bar examination preparation really does kind of need to be the top priority in your life for six weeks or however long the class is. Um, but just get it done, knock it out, pass, and then you can enjoy the rest of your life until you move to a different state and then you have to take another bar exam. Um, then I always give some tips for kind of the 48 hours before the exam that people don't tell you, which is, um, so for the 48 hours or maybe three days before the exam, you really, um, hopefully by that time you have finished your, your coursework, um, all the information is in your head to the point where you're afraid to go to sleep because if you lay like that on your pillow, all the information will come out of your ear. Um, I always felt that way, but luckily that never happened. Um, so the, the three days before the bar exam is not the time to try to experiment with new things like new foods or new sleep medication <laughs> or, or things like that. You really just kind of want to keep it on an even keel going through the exam. Um, if you can stay in a hotel downtown, 
because it's at the Salt Palace, right, this year? Or is it in Zandy? Yeah. It's in Zandy. Okay, so I would, you know, if you can get, if you can afford to get a room or if you have Marriott points or something and you can afford to stay down there, I would definitely recommend it. Although in July, it's not so big of a deal. I took Utah in February, and I was really concerned about snow for some reason and driving in the snow. So I stayed downtown, and that was good. Um, make sure that you upload your essay answers um, within the time period prescribed. If you don't do it, there's really nothing that they can do for you and you're going to have to present, you know, a police report saying you were in a car accident or a note from your doctor saying that you had a stroke or something. But we've had several applicants in the last couple of years not upload their essays within the prescribed time and you just want to make sure, you know, that you do that. And what I would do, since there's so many places that have free Wi-Fi, you can go back to your hotel, you can go home. Uh, I think I did for Utah, I think I did it from a McDonald's because I didn't want to get, like, I didn't want to get too far away from Salt Palace and I just wanted it down as quickly as possible. So, um, so I would recommend that you do that. Um, the day before the exam, I always, oh, could I interrupt just to sure. be clear? For the July exam, there is not internet at the test taking site. There is not Wi-Fi for you. So you must, ahead of time, figure out where you're going to go to get Wi-Fi access to upload immediately. What, what time do we have to upload? I believe, I believe it's by 8 p.m. Let's check the instructions. Okay. Um, so again, the night before the exam, um, um, I always stop studying fairly early, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, because by that time, guys, when the time for action has arrived, the time for preparation is over. If you don't know it, you're not going to know it. So um, best to just wrap it up. Um, go to dinner. Go to a movie. Um, you know, go do something that you like to do. Um, I always went out with people that I studied for the bar exam with, and that was kind of fun. It was a fun break from studying and just kind of focus on fun things. Um, when you wake up in the morning, I'd wake up a full hour earlier than you normally do just to get going, have your coffee or whatever you like. Um, and then just to get warmed up on the day of the essays, maybe just run through an MPT practice question, just read it or read through some essay questions. On the morning of your MBE, maybe just do 10 or 15 practice questions to get you warmed up and get you going. Um, I always, so for Utah, I packed my lunch because you don't have a very long lunch break, and I think I just ate in my car, which is pretty boring, and obviously I didn't have a chance to stop a robbery or perform any other access to the activity during the break, but it was nice. I just went down to my car, I had a little cooler with some, some stuff that I like. Um, Especially if you have like special dietary needs, like I kind of avoid gluten now. Um, you want to have your own food. Don't take chances trying to eat food that you don't normally eat or run the risk that you won't be able to find something or stand in line. When I took Nevada, for some reason, I thought like going to McDonald's for an extra value meal would be a great idea during the break. And in the afternoon, that Big Mac just sat and churned in my stomach. It was not a good, good thing. So, um, okay. And then... Um, that's pretty much it for my tips. Um, is there any questions? I have a question for you okay. when you grade essays. Yes. Is there a place where students lose points, for example, by structuring their answer poorly? Is there Are there one or two things they should finish <coughs> knowing the substance? Yeah, when it comes to the essays, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you be as organized as you can. If you're only having like 30 minutes per answer, I mean, you're not going to have a huge long answer because it's you only have 30 minutes to write. And a lot of the things that, you know, people get frustrated about, especially with some of the UCC topics, and I don't even remember if those are MEE anymore because they, they change um, sometimes. So Article 2 right. is still on the multiple choice. Right. Article 9 is only... And it's on essays. Article nine right. is only essays. Essay. Okay. So a lot of times people will say, "Oh, you know, I don't, I don't understand Article nine. Like I don't understand like the public policy or or the purpose of it." And for the bar exam, you don't need to understand Article nine. You don't need to understand Article two. What you need to know is you need to know the rules and be able to recite the rules and then apply the facts that have been given in the fact pattern to the 
to the rules. And if you do that, you will probably get a three and you will pass that question. Don't spend a lot of time during your bar exam course trying to understand the Uniform Commercial Code. Like, you need to understand it. You need to know the rules and be able to apply those rules to the facts. Anything else? Nothing that I can think of, but I'm sure they'll have questions for you. Okay, yes, in the corner. So there's no spell check, obviously, on the software we're using. Does that, like, prejudice you against grading? Um, <laughs> if, you, if you spell a lot of words wrong, you probably won't be dinged down. I mean, one of the things that I tell people when... Um, when I'm grading, especially when we've gotten new graders, is you know, you know, we all have, you know, we all, meaning the graders, have been practicing a minimum of five years usually, and then up to <laughs> twenty or twenty-five. And we know that you guys, you know, haven't practiced law, and you're taking this stuff under exam conditions, and some of you have not seen it before. So we're not going to ding people for misspellings, but what we will ding you for is not organizing your stuff when you're writing your answer. Like, if you do a brain dump, you're going to pick up points, but you're not going to get a five, and you may not even get a four. So or be as organized as you can, and if you're typing, there's really no reason not to be, because you can be outlining your essay as you read the question, right? And then go back in and fill out, and then copy, paste, cut, paste, you know, and then, you know, move on to the next one when you're done. Yes? What can we do to pick up those extra two points? The extra two points. I mean, really, on the MPT, I mean, we give out. I mean, we give out a few fives every year. Fives are hard to get. I mean, you really have to write a pretty close to perfect answer to get a five. Usually, um, if I grade twenty or twenty-five papers on an exam, I might give out one five and maybe three fours, maybe four fours, and the rest are going to be you know threes. And, and, and twos. We've just seen, we've seen some bad papers lately, just bad. Not the exam that we just had, but the one that was in February. There were some bad papers. And people think, oh, well, you know, it's, it's okay because it's graded on a curve, and it's really not. I mean, we've got a point sheet, and I can't, we can, we're not, I'm not supposed to reveal too many of the secrets of bar examiners, but um, we've got a point sheet that tells us, okay, graders, this is what you're looking for, and uh, this is how you're going to grade this question. And if everybody gets a two, everybody gets a two. If everybody gets a four, everybody gets a four. Um, but you know what we come in at is we kind of say, all right, you know, what, what is an answer that passes? And it's not that hard to get a three. I mean, really, you have to cover the material they want you to cover. You know, do a decent job of responding to whatever it is at the call of the question, and you're you're going to get a three. But if you don't manage your time, if you're leaving out huge gaps, that's where you lose points. But picking up points, I mean. Fives are hard to get. Fours are are easier. Um, but st study your MPTs. Organize your time. Read the question fully. Um, I mean, there's no tricks to, to getting a good score on an MPT. It's can you read the file quickly? Can you synthesize the information? Can you adequately and cohesively respond to whatever it is they're asking you to do in 90 minutes? That's how you pick up those extra points. Other questions? No other questions. Okay. Thanks so much for having me, inviting me. It's always a pleasure to come talk to you. Guys. So next up, we have a number of panelists, each of whom had a different experience taking the bar. Who are going to talk to you about how they prepare um, and some of the the tips and tricks that they have. Um, it was a July two thousand sixteen. Yes. Yep. And so, recent graduate, many of you know him. Erica, next to him, well, I'll let you talk about it, but yeah. <laughs> July yeah, and February. July and February. I was throw it out there, I didn't pass July, so there you have it. And she'll <laughs> talk about that. Nate Mitchell, who I think graduated three years ago? 2013. 2013, okay. Um, and you're at Snow Christian Sun, okay. And then, Jessica, are you Jessica Horton or Jessica Anderson? Um, Anderson's my middle name, but Horton, yeah. Okay, and what year did you graduate? 15. In 2015, and then you all know Professor Bernstein. Um, you don't have to talk about when I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> we won't mention that. Um, <laughs> Professor Bernstein, will you start? I will. Oh, boy. Uh, was it Erica down there? You're in good company, my friend. I'm here to tell you that I failed the bar exam. Um, I went to Harvard Law School. Yes, I went to Harvard Law School, and I failed two bar exams. 
simultaneously. Um, and if I, if you ever told me that I would be sitting in front of a crowd of people talking to you about it, I would tell you you are crazy. <laughs> but the reason that I am here is to tell you that there is life after failing the bar exam. And smart people fail. It happens. Um, and so I wanted you all to benefit from my experience. So I am from the New York area, in case you can't tell from my accent. I took New York and New Jersey at the same time. Um, it was. Over 20 years ago, the bar exam was different then. Um, there, was, there was no uniform bar exam. It was multi-state. One day was multi-state essays. One day was multi-state, which was your 200 multiple choice, and then the second day was essay. Um, and so if you took two bars, the way it works is you had the multi-state in the middle, and then on either day, like the day before and the day after, you took that state-specific essay questions, okay? So I failed them both. Um, I, I kind of had a feeling it was going to happen, and what I will tell you my problem was is mostly I was panicked. Like, I was panicked the whole time. Um, I, and this was also before, I mean, there were computers, but nobody took the bar exam by computer. It was written, and you had to fill out those stupid bubbles. Um, but anyway, I panicked, and what I will tell you is that because there was so much material, I was also like burned out by the time I was done with law school, and it's hard. You're done, you're graduated, and like you want a break. You really want a break, and boom, you're in this like intense bar review class where they're throwing stuff at you all the time. And for me, I didn't want to take practice exams because in my mind I knew I wasn't ready. Like I was busy trying to memorize all those stupid acronyms they throw at you and the mnemonics and you know, I, I hope it's better, I don't know if it is, that they throw all this stuff at you and I'm like, I'm not going to take the practice exams because I'm not going to get the questions right because I don't know the material yet. And I will tell you, do not be like me, that is why I'm sitting up here. The way you need to learn this material is apply, right? You don't have to like sit here and rattle off the mnemonic. That's not what they ask you to do on the bar exam, right? You have to be able to read the questions and, you know, figure out the answer they want you to get. And the only way that you can do that is by taking the practice exam. So I cannot stress to you how important those are. Take them until they are coming out of your ears. And then by the time you get the real ones, you're like, Shh, I've done this in my sleep, you know? So that is really important. The other thing that I would tell you is you really need to be disciplined about how you study. Set yourself a schedule. Like, it was hard for me because I was freaking out and seeing everyone else from my who was in my bar class or whatever actually freaked me out. And like watching them study freaked me out. And so I sort of isolated myself from them. And I would try and study at home on my bed. That's an excellent idea, let me tell you, studying at home on your bed. Don't do that. Um, find a way, find a place, whether it's like we have a lovely new building, you guys have access to the building. Find a spot, bring your lunch, come make it. It's like a work day. You know, once the classes are over, you set yourself a schedule, and I'm going to be there from 9 to 5 or 10 to 2 or whatever your schedule is, and just be disciplined about it and stick to it and do those dang practice questions. And you guys can definitely do this, but you can also be your own worst enemy, which I think is what happened to me. So. Dean Dickey has a question for you. Yes. No, I don't have a question. I just wanted to um, um, say something. You have access to the building until the end of July. So as far as we're concerned, you're still a student. So your cards will work. You can come here, get study rooms, mm -hmm. study on um, you know, restricted floors. So we don't officially kick you out until after the bar exam. <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone gets nervous, or I'm here, right? I work here. So you can definitely come talk to me. I'm happy to be a resource. <laughs> Jessica? All right, so I am um, Jessica Horton. I am a second year associate at Curtin McConkie, and I took the bar exam in July 2015. And I was actually 25 weeks pregnant when I took the bar exam. But it actually was awesome because I could bring in snacks and water, whereas everyone else could not. And they placed me really close to the bathroom, which was also great. But I would, along those lines, if you do, um, if you are pregnant or have any other sort of medical conditions that um, may come up, Talk, you have to report that early on to get accommodations and just take care of that early so that way, you know, days before the exam, you're not worried about that. Um, so I, I took Barbary and it was really awesome. I think I, it almost over prepared me for the test, but I am glad that I over prepared because going into the test, I wasn't as stressed as I would have been had I not um, studied so much. 
And I did follow the schedule pretty closely. What they do is they have videos, that, and um, instructional videos that talk about the topics, and then they have practice questions, both multiple choice and essay and for the MPT. Um, and I did almost everything that they offered, which was very hard. And it, uh, by the end, it was hard to make myself sit there and do it. <laughs> I got to the point where I'd study different subjects in different rooms in my apartment just so I could kind of mix things up a little bit. But it helps me to remember things like, oh yeah, I studied this in the spare bedroom, I studied this here. Um, and I also, I'd also say too that you're, you've made it to your third year of law school. You know how to study. You know what works best for you. So if something isn't working with the way that Barbie does it or um, Kaplan or anything else, do what works best for you because you know yourself. Um, and I, I guess along with that too, take care of yourself. If you know that you know maybe sleeping in today will help me to be more effective later, do that. Um, if going on a walk or um, a hike or um, doing one of your hobbies, like schedule in time for yourself. Because it's stressful enough if you're just focusing on this test and thinking about all those things. Like, make sure that you take care of yourself. Um, I took weekends off where I could, and Barbie does schedule um, study period on Saturdays, so I would try to incorporate that earlier into the week so I could take off most of Saturdays and Sundays. And that really helped me to have some sense of balance um, during the craziness that is studying the bar exam. Um, I also did not work, and part of that was I had the option of working, but I decided that I didn't want to because if I had to retake the test with a newborn, I think I probably would have lost it. And so I decided that I was that I would treat um, studying for the bar exam as a job, and it was probably more of like a ten to seven type thing because I did sleep in, which was awesome. Um, <laughs> I did try to keep it so that way it was like a job where I um, had that scheduled time in and then could take take off time outside of that. Um, distractions were hard. I definitely checked Facebook more than I should have. But I also, it came to the point where like, if I scheduled in distractions, then it wasn't so bad. I'd be like, okay, if I can get through these, you know, this next set of practice questions, then I can do X for 15 minutes and then return back to it. Um, I did send in essays for grading. Um, they, they do allow that. And I actually thought it was helpful, but what was more helpful for me was to go through Barbara's um, sample answers and to look through and see how they structure the questions. and. If you read through enough of those after you've um, taken the practice test and they um, self grade your answer, you can see how formulaic it is. And that was helpful for me because then by the end, I'd say, like, oh, yeah, this is, the, um, this is what I need to put here, this is what I need to put here. And even if I didn't know um, the answer, like in, in the beginning, sometimes I would just type out the answers that they had. And that helps me to memorize the type of information that they, um, they want you to know. Uh, I also do the same thing too with multiple choice questions. If I miss a multiple choice question, I type out the, the correct answer so that way I could then um, get stuck in my brain more. Um, and I think the most difficult thing about proper preparation is just doing it. And that's kind of hard, but it is what it is. You have to sit there, you have to do it. But if you get through it and if you can stick um, close to the schedule, you'll be fine. When you go into the test, yes, it's a big test and you'll be nervous, but you if you've done the preparation, you know that you've done all that you can, and at that point, it's, it is what it is. But at least you can go in with that comfort. So, any questions with that? You guys are going to do great. You really are. I kind of wish I was back in your shoes. Because working's hard too. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so we've been talking about the bar exam gives me heart palpitations. So I disagree with Jessica a little bit on that. <laughs> Um, but uh, I, I think you should keep in mind that the bar exam is a marathon, and you will be so sick of those books and so sick of those outlines and flashcards and questions by the end of it that you sort of just have to keep going, which um, is one of the challenges associated with the bar exam. One cool part about the bar exam, if you're like me and you're introspective, um, uh, is it is probably one of the last great opportunities to sit down with yourself and think about your strengths and weaknesses um, because they will matter and they'll come into play when you're preparing. And so I think we all have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, my biggest weakness is probably stress management. I don't manage stress well. I love it, but I don't manage it well. And so uh, I had to think ahead to how I could mitigate you know, concerns arising out of personal relationships, work issues, um, and how I could get to the point where I wasn't just in a raw state of panic right before the exam. I did Barbary, um, and I worked. I think that's why I'm up here. I worked all the way through. Um, I worked at a firm. 
Uh, you only have a 20 hour billable requirement, Kylie. 20 hours a week, you can do that. Um, uh, but what I did is I thought to myself, well, it's really important to me what my firm thinks. Later on I learned they didn't care. Um, uh, but it's really important what the firm thinks. I want to like meet my hour requirement. So I tried to do is I front-loaded some of my work and back-loaded uh, uh, the bar prep. But what that meant is I, my study was almost wholly divorced from Barbary's schedule, unfortunately. And by the end of the bar prep period, I was in, indulging in a healthy amount of self-delusion. They have these checklists <laughs> where you go through and you mark off what you've done. I was just lying. <laughs> because I knew that if I looked at that in the morning and saw that I was like 30% of the way through, it was just going to make my stress that much worse. Um, <laughs> Self-delusion, not lying. <laughs> um, but I, I think you should figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. I felt like I had a lot of professors in law school who gave me tests where I was required to do essays that were 30-minute essays. Which, if you're a professor, that's a good thing, because I felt like by the time I got to the bar exam, I was ready to do the issue spotting and the response in 30 minutes. And so I almost did none of the practice essays. I didn't send in my essays for grading. What I would do is I'd read the essays and the answers recreationally when I was so sick of memorizing things I couldn't do it anymore. So I'd just sit in bed at night and read essays. Um, but I knew I was sort of weak in terms of memorizing things. I really have a hard time memorizing things. And so for me, it was better to spend more time on that um, because I knew that was sort of a weak. Um, uh, I did not stay on track. Uh, probably the most difficult part of the bar exam is that it is a marathon, and you've got to stay on it, and you'll be tired by the end of it. I, I, I told this to last year's presentation. They asked, what's the one thing you wish you'd known about the bar exam? And I, I said, I wish I had known that there would be such a cathartic release when I was done. Because I was, I was driving down the road and I start bawling, and I'm like, very dangerous. Walk up the tears and drive down the road. Um, but it will feel good to be done, and you're, you're almost there, guys. So. Nate, I don't remember your answer from last year. Did you use any additional study aids like critical pass flashcards or any of the NCBE um, practice exams that Tanya recommended? So I, so. Uh, I, that actually reminded me of one other thing. I think if you are a high-stress person, don't study at the law school. Find somewhere safe and have <laughs> <laughs> Study somewhere else because we, my group of friends, I love them so much. They are very high-stress individuals. And so like, if we studied together, it just made things worse. Mm -hmm. And so we all had secret study places. Dick Baldwin's Harmons. I didn't learn that until like a year later. <laughs> Where are garments? Like, you can study on the section. Uh, so um, you'll have your secret study locations. But one thing that my friends and I didn't know about, probably because we were communicating, is downloading actual multiple choice choice tests from the NCBE website. I think you should do that maybe halfway through the study process. I think that will be a really good way to familiarize yourself with the questions because Barbary's it's a pedagogical tool. It's designing it's designed to help you learn material. It doesn't necessarily help simulate the process. Um, and so download those tests as far as flashcards. I made my own because that's how I learned things. So and I can show you how to get the old multiple choice test. You can get four full tests off of NCBE. They're 50 bucks a pop. And if you do the online one, it will tell you the right answer and why it's the right answer when you do it. We're seeing more and more crossover questions where they're testing two different topics at the same time. And those are the recent ones you can get are very good examples of that crossover. Eric? Hi, I'm Erica, and I think most of you know me, or I don't know, maybe you don't, that's fine, either way. <laughs> um, but as I mentioned earlier, I took the July bar and I did not pass, and I just recently took the February bar, um, and I don't know yet if I've passed that or not. <laughs> um, but most of what has been said from these panelists so far, I agree with completely. Um, 
I think you have to have a really serious and honest discussion with yourself before you decide before you start studying and ask yourself what does work for me because you're going to log on to whatever platform you purchased and like Nate was saying there's going to be checklists there and if you're one of those people that you just need to have the checklist completed you need to have a hundred percent as your progress um, then I would say do do what Nate did and just <laughs> check them off because when I took it in July I was obsessed with checking off those boxes but what that meant was that I wasn't actually doing what worked for me in terms of studying like I spent four hours a day watching a lecture a video and I would fill in the little outlines they give you an outline with blanks to fill in to help keep you engaged um, so you learn things and that did not work for me I mean I have all these completed outlines and I just was like well, I must have done what I needed to do, and I must now be in a position to pass because I checked off those boxes on my um, my little practice thing, and that didn't work for me because I had to take it again in February. <laughs> so I would say definitely be honest with yourself. Um, that, you know, Kaplan, Barbary, and Themis, how those are laid out, they're gonna work really well for some people. Um, Nick and I live together, and I know, and you'll probably get to this, sorry if I'm stealing your answer, um, but I think that the course worked well for you in terms of how it was laid out, um, and I felt like it should be working for me because if it was working for other people, you know, <laughs> it must be what I need to do, but um, I would say, again, just have a serious conversation with yourself if you're going to get overwhelmed the first day you look at all of the bar materials look at the bar materials now just flip through some of your books get a sense of what exactly is in there because it is a ton of stuff it's not if you think about it in your head right now you're like oh contracts I took that one all year I'm familiar with that it's not going to be a big deal but when you start watching those lectures and they're throwing things at you so quickly, it's not gonna feel like it's not a big deal anymore. It's going to be, it might be overwhelming for some people. So, and that was the case for me. So um, when I took it again in February, I didn't stick to the Kaplan schedule. I used mostly um, their question bank um, for MBE questions. And I also used a lot of their essays um, and I submitted essays to their essay graders, um, and I also did a couple of MPTs. They have an MPT bank available, um, and I did some of those as well. But um, the biggest difference was I actually just did what worked, and I think it's been said multiple times, now is not the time to experiment with new <laughs> anything in your life. So just don't, if you're gonna experiment, like get it out now before graduation so that you know <laughs> you know, it's out of your system. Um, but yeah, if, I don't know if anyone has questions about, that's kind of a very messy uh, <laughs> summary of my experience. But if anyone wants to talk about, you know, like you're really unsure or like you're just panicking a little bit and you just need someone to talk to about it, um, I'm more than happy to talk to anyone who just wants to I don't know, talk about, we don't even have to talk about the bar because that sucks, but <laughs> we can talk about something else, but I'm around, so. And I brought the Kaplan books that you'll get in the mail and the Themis books you'll get in the mail. So if you want to flip through those afterwards, you're more than welcome to. And then I brought the monthly schedules for online and in-class Barbary, Themis, and Kaplan. So you're welcome to take a look at those. And one of my questions is, how realistic are those schedules? Because it says contracts, nine to one. What does that really mean? Um, I think for Kaplan at least, it was nine to one was like the live video and then I think like a break for lunch and then like one hour of like reviewing one of those books. Um, so I think you'll have the option to do a live course 
Um, or you can just watch the recorded videos. I paid for the live course. I wouldn't recommend it just because they talk so slow. Um, I, I lost I lost interest like that. Um, so I would just like watch the videos they have pre-recorded on like one and a half speed because on one and a half speed they're actually talking like normal people. Um, so I think that's an area where you can get in a little extra study time in terms of their schedule. Um, but in terms of like you're not going to be done at one o'clock in the afternoon studying for the contracts. Like <laughs> you're, it, it says nine to one on there. That's the stuff that they're probably going to require you to do, like the video and their little. Like Kaplan does checkpoint quizzes that is based off of what's in the video. Um, but you're going to need to have time to actually sit down and digest what you just, like, what just happened to you, <laughs> um, and, and apply all those things. I mean, that's, as we've heard numerous times, that's key, is the application. Um, so it says 920, and that looks super, like, awesome, and you're like, yes, like, I can do that, one, not a big deal, but I don't think 921 is going to be sufficient to actually get you to feel comfortable with what you have to know for the bar. I mean, same with like um, Saturday and Sunday. Like I think Kaplan for us didn't schedule things on Saturday and Sunday. So we were super jazzed about that. <laughs> um, and if you need those days to feel human, to see the world, to interact with actual human beings, um, then do that. But. Like, those are really critical days also in terms of making sure you sit down and review things that you're not comfortable with, <clears throat> practice things that you're feeling comfortable with but need to stay up to speed on. Um, and so, yeah, th those schedules are not real life. <laughs> They're not real. <laughs> Do you want to add anything and then I want to give people time to ask questions? Uh, well, just real briefly, um, in terms of the schedules, you also, at least I didn't want to study every waking moment. I think that's really bad for your mental health. Um, you need to give yourself some some downtime at night. So I like Jessica, I treated it as a job. I was going from usually like eight to about six. That was gonna be my study time after six o'clock. I, I did nothing even closely related to the bar or law. I would watch trash TV or something. So, um, and I feel like that helped me out immensely just in like the beginning of July where you're equal parts horrified and exhausted. I think just having this downtime um, throughout helps. And that's all I have to add. What questions do y'all have? Lexi? Um, would it be, because I know that you were saying that it takes a long time to transfer the score to a different state, um, would it be easier to just stay and try to take it here again? Or I don't really know, like what, I, I guess that's more directed for... For Erica? Yes. Sorry. Did you just want to transfer your score? You yeah. have a job here. But yeah. let's talk with perhaps Professor Hill afterwards about the transfer process. Okay. Right. Dave, did you have a question? Your hand up? Yeah, so is it pretty well defined after the, the four hour lecture um, what it is that you're supposed to do for homework after that? Are there assigned homework assignments for that period? Mm -hmm. that we'll start yeah. yeah, they broke it down in terms of the, yeah, they broke it down in terms of like do 33 practice questions in this area and or like review this portion of your outline in the book. So they'll break it down. And Nick, how, how, were you able to complete it all in your 10 hours per day? Yeah, yeah it was. I, it was definitely manageable in a little time. I, I bought critical pass flashcards. I thought those helped just kind of at the very end to just kind of go over the basics of what I just learned. That that helped me a lot, just kind of cement it. Critical, it. critical pass tends to get high marks from our test takers overall. They're a little bit pricey. You can get them on Amazon, but I'll bet you can track down a yeah. prior taker. Yeah, I used. So. Carmen? Yeah. yeah, I heard you make a joke about oh, billing 20 yeah. hours. It'll be easy. Um, <laughs> how many hours did you bill? 
when you were working and studying? So I I, uh, I sort of structured it a little bit differently. I, I was trying to build 30 at the beginning of the summer because I knew it would go down over time. And so I, I just created my own little bell curve um, I, that was front-loaded. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I also, my firm will give us two weeks off to study for the bar exam. And I think, I think you have to be very honest with yourself. And I knew that two weeks would not help you feel prepared. So I actually asked the firm and said, hey, give me a week extra unpaid when you do that. And they're like, sure, we don't have to pay you for a week of study. Great. And so I took three weeks and my score was way beyond what I needed to pass, but I don't have a single regret. I'm glad I studied as hard as I did. I'm glad I took the week off. Yeah. Um, so when you were working, you were feeling that much, but in terms of like hours you were actually working, what did that look like? Um, I think I would go into the office at about 7 or 7.30. I think you should pay attention to when you study best. So I knew I study really well in the morning. And so I'd study until noon, put my materials away, and then just sort of build until five or six, okay. to the extent I could. You know how to build a couple hours. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I can just jump in on that one, I mean, I got a lot more confidence. At, we hadn't started yet, right? The advantage of when I found the bar was that it was in the summer, and we, we hadn't actually started working yet. And when I took them out in February, I had already had a job. Um, and I did, by the way, pass both. I took them separately later on in life. Um, but the, when I went to take the first one, I basically told them, because I did not want to fail the second time, so I basically told them how much time I needed. Okay. And I think you sort of get that confidence the second time, yeah. which hopefully you won't get to, but you need to take the time you need. you know. And I did the same thing where it's like, fine, I'll take two weeks unpaid so I can have a month to study or whatever you need, because you really, you got to knock it out, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Because then I was signing law clerk on everything until then. So you just want to get it over with. And if you feel you need more time, then I would just say talk to your employer and do the best you can. That's in their benefit for you. Yeah. Know. And so yeah. you definitely have an agreement in those terms, like, yeah. hey, this is for you. Even though it's really for me, but if you raise yeah. it like that, it goes a lot better. Erica, for everyone who passed and who failed, how did you feel right after you took the bar about like your performance on the bar, and how did that correlate with the actual result that you got? Oh, I totally thought I failed. <laughs> I thought I was going to miss it by like five points. Um, we got weird questions on the essays. Uh, and uh, I, I think you can't put a lot of stock in your feelings. You've got to just set it aside for months. That, that is absolutely true, but I can tell you, I walked out that first time and I did not have a good feeling, and it was not at all the way I felt the second time. I'm, and because I took two different bars then, right? I don't know, it was like almost a year and a half apart. And when I walked out with all that preparation that I had done and everything, I actually felt pretty confident. It was it was a very different feeling to me from the first time I had taken it. Which, But that's still, you know, I could have been deluded, but I wasn't. <laughs> I was convinced I felt. I was absolutely convinced that I felt. Uh, real quick, what's the entire point structure of the bar? I think you said you need 270 to pass, but like, how does that break down? And second question, how long after you take the bar do you find out what happened to you on the bar? Todd, do you want to answer that question? Yeah, absolutely. So um, in theory, um, there's a maximum of 400 points available. 200 points for the essays and 200 points for the MBE. However, really the top score on the MBE most of the time turns out to be like a 180 or a 185. Um, the average score for the MBE in Utah varies. It could, it's usually around 142 or 144, I believe. And the essays are scaled to the MBEs, which is kind of a complicated thing, and you don't really need to understand that other than to know that you need to average three points per essay in order to pass. So um, you need 270 to pass, which equates to if you did 140 on your MBE, and 140 on your essays, then you're over the minimum of where you need to be. Um, so, um, does that answer your question? It helps, yes. Okay. So, I mean, basically, you need a 135 and a 135, or you need a 140 and a 130, or you need a 150 and a 120. There's no minimum score on either section that you need to pass, but obviously if you get like a 120 on the MBE, you're gonna need something a lot higher than that on your essays. And if you're not getting the points on the MBE, then let's face it, you're probably not gonna get them on the essays either. So 270 is the minimum. 
Um, obviously, if you get 271, you pass. If you get 301, you pass. But again, what is the minimum needed to pass? <laughs> Let's not find out. So. And uh, the second part, how, how, how long does it take to get your results back? Good question. So a lot of times they don't even tell us um, when, when they're going to be posting the results. Um, it takes longer for the summer exam than it does for the winter exam because there's more test takers. Um, usually for the winter exam, I believe it's six to seven weeks. Um, for the summer exam, it can be eight or maybe nine. Um, and they'll give you instructions about that when you take the exam, when you can start looking or when you should start looking on the Utah State Bar website. For my bar exam, when I took the Utah Bar exam, they posted the results on a Saturday morning. Um, and I think it was like the Saturday before Easter. Um, it was like the first week of April. And we took the, the exam at the end of February. So it's, you know, six weeks, seven weeks. They'll usually post the results at a time the bar offices are closed because they don't want a bunch of people calling and, you know, I'm mad because they failed or whatever. Um, so I think on a Friday afternoon or a Saturday morning is usually when they'll post the results. Do you take it? It's yeah. consistently mid September for the July exam. I think Nate had a follow up. I was so neurotic that I actually set up like a website change tractor that would notify me. <laughs> 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 so anyways, but no, just going to Grant's question about uh, uh, that breakdown between the points, I think you should keep in mind that breakdown is a little bit artificial when it comes to applying it to your study habits because those topics, the, those MBE topics, they'll probably make up anywhere from 50 to 70 percent, and I'm, I'm just pulling that based on my own experience, your essay scores. So even though the, the division is that way, like, if you're going to focus on something, make sure you know those MBE topics. Cool. Mm -hmm. okay. I think online they have a breakdown of what percent each topic is tested. Yeah, broadly. Yeah. No, no, we're going to get that. Yeah. So, um, as a 3L whispering back here as y'all talk, like normal 3Ls, um, and I'm wondering, we are talking about, you know, anxiety reducers for studying for the bar, and you've kind of talked about that, but what was one of the most surprising things that reduced your stress during the bar prep? Like something you never anticipated would be so stress relieving. For me, it's like exercise and working out. Like if I don't run or go to the gym, I can be real cranky like for the rest of the day. So like if you're into the gym, if you're into fitness, you know, just keep doing that and make time in your schedule to do it. Um, if it's, you know, if you're into meditation, I'm not into meditation because I can't sit still for more than about 10 minutes, but if that's your thing, you know, keep doing that. Um, but. Yeah, it's important to keep your routines as much as you can as well. So I think it's a fine balance, right? Because there was like the first time when I had all of this stress, but yet wasn't channeling it properly in terms of what I was doing. And so there I was just focusing on how can I reduce the stress, which was not studying or taking these practice exams. You know, so, so you definitely have to balance it. Like you have to channel it and use it to like say, okay, well, I'm going to be directed and I'm going to focus, and I'm going to make it like a job, or I'm going to study for these hours. But then I like what Nick said at night. you got to give yourself a mental break from it for a lot of reasons, besides the fact that you'll just go bonkers. Um, the other reason is it gives it time to kind of seep in. You notice like when you go off and do something else, like I like to walk outside or whatever, and I just take a walk. And certain things are like, I, sometimes I get some of my best ideas then when I'm not actively thinking about something. So I think it's important to you know, make sure you're not diluting yourself and just focusing on the stress relief, but also giving yourself a break, whatever that is for you. Is that? I know some of you have to leave, so if you need to, feel free, but if you'd like to stay and ask more questions, feel free to do that as well. I think you should get on the same page as your significant other if you have one and your kids. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you're on the same page. My, my girlfriend all through law school, I'd disappear during finals week and I'd show back up to the apartment and she'd say, hey, who are you? What are you doing in the house? And uh, I said, I do not want that comment all the way through the bar exam. It's going to make me feel bad. It's going to make me feel guilty. You need to know I'm going to disappear for six to eight weeks. And, and just make sure you're on the same page with people. I think I did a lot of walking too. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah.
Well, I think for me, the most relaxing thing ever was just walking my dog at night. Plus, it also helped me study for torts, I feel like, so I was seeing negligence everywhere. <laughs> so, um, that really helped solidify those topics in my mind. But uh, I think, I think uh, what Nate was saying, it is important to tell your family you're not going to be seeing them as much. Um, they'll feel bad. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with you. It's just, I need to study. I probably shouldn't have said that while I was being recorded. Uh, Nick and Erica, I was just wondering, did you guys keep working for the Utah Disability Law Center like while you were studying? No, I, I worked right up until the Kaplan course started and then I uh, quit. I work, the first time I worked up until the Kaplan course started, the second time I worked, um, I worked 32 hours a week and then I took two weeks off right before the exam. And to answer Megan's question about anxiety, having a schedule that forced me to be very efficient with my time and with what I was learning and how actually really reduced my anxiety going into the bar and preparing for it the second time. So the first time I stressed out about everything because I had time to stress out about everything. Like you think about the things you don't know when you have time to do that. And the second time I just didn't have that luxury or curse, whatever. Um, <laughs> and, and so I worked the second time. Erica? Um, this is for Erica. Um, did you find out your bar results in time to apply for the February bar on time, or did you have to do a late application? They, I think they extend the application. If you, you find out, so I found out my results like in mid September, and then I think they give you, like, if you're reapplying, they give like an extended deadline so that you are able to apply without having to pay additional money for being late. Okay. Thank you to all of you for coming. I'm guessing we can talk our panelists into working for a few minutes if you have individual questions. You're welcome to come down and look at the books, grab the schedules, or grab more food. <laughs>